I don't know. I, I, I really want y'all opinion on this. Um, a, co- a Colorado lawmaker calls a legislature, a legislator rather, uh, buckwheat. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Colorado uh, by the name of Richard Holtorf uh, let his good old boy show after re- uh, referring to another legislator as buckwheat on Wednesday. Uh, let's take a listen in to what he said and then we'll continue talking about it. To order controversy at the Colorado Capitol because that's when your safety and it's all about what Representative Richard Holtorf said Wednesday. I'm getting there. Don't worry, Buckwheat. I'm getting there. Holtorf, a Republican from the southeastern part of the state, had just begun advocating for an amendment he wanted to a bill that would give millions to creative arts, some specifically for underserved communities, when he made the controversial comment. That's an endearing term, by the way. It was not endearing to Representative Leslie Herod, who was speaking just before him. She tells us Holtorf was talking in her direction, but she does not know who he was addressing. Holtorf did not want to talk a lot about what happened Wednesday, but told Fox 31, quote, there is always two sides to every story. Two sides. Controversy there, at the Colorado. T- t- two sides to every, every story there is not. I would like to know. I would yeah. Like she know. pulled up on his ass, though. She, she pulled. She, she, she should have slapped fire his ass, too. Fuck <laughs> with You know, but, sometimes just pulling up is enough, though, when you just appear. And what you yeah, said? Yeah, like, poof. What you said? <laughs> Because I didn't know exactly who he was talking to, right? Um, but that legislator, the, the, the black woman, because my thing when I was watching, I'm like, especially if he's talking to a black woman. Because if you know Buckwheat, you know from, the, from you know, his hair, you know him from um, the, the, it wasn't the, the Rascals. Too? It was, it was, it, I don't even know if it was, it possibly, but it was just a caricature of blackness. So it's both yeah. racist, but it's also attacking uh, this black woman's hair. So I, yeah, yeah, that's Buck Wild. I'm sorry. It's Buck Wild calling her Buck Wheat. Yeah, okay. I, didn't, yeah, I walked right. I walked right into that. <laughs> it's okay, but no. Um. Yeah, and then he didn't want to come. He didn't want to say anything about it because yeah. he knew he knew that was very very uh, racist. I mean, look at him. He's one of those. He's one of those that think that they're you know superior. He probably superior. he was at January. He probably knows a lot of people who was at January sixth if he wasn't yeah. there himself. He probably was the man that walked through the back door and <laughs> opened up the door for the people to come in. in. Come on in, fellas. Yeah. Uh, you know, no buckwheat allowed, uh, though. No buckwheat allowed. That piece at the end where uh, the journalist was saying there's two sides, uh, you know, uh, he there's wasn't two, saying it himself. He was quoting someone else saying that's two, t- two sides to every story. There's two sides to every story. Nah. Yeah. There's, yeah, yeah. There's it not made two for sides a powerful this quote for, 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 for the network, for the, yeah. uh, you know, Fox 31. Uh, it made for a powerful yeah. quote for that, for that place. But, um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he, people never know who's pulling up on them. Yeah, she should have slapped five, but she would have probably went to jail for hitting yeah you know, yeah but and th- so her and then he said it was a enough. term of endearment term of no, endearment it wasn't. My ass. Me, are you talking about my are you talking about my beta beads are you talking about my skin color are you talking about right. my features what are you talking about right and you not even right. don't look like me so you have no right to speak. i don't like that i don't like yeah. that when they feel like you know i have a black friend and she mm. or he lets me call them fuck we so mm. that's just enough yeah you know? yeah that doesn't work yeah, oh, definitely. Tweet yeah, tweet it. Let's see what they they said on the tweet. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Tweet said the following: "This is what I have to deal with every damn day." Hashtag on we press. That's Leslie Herod. Well, you know, yeah. And what's her jo- and what's her title? What's her job? She's a legislator there in the. Uh, I, where, where and were she we? gets At no respect Colorado? because she's a black woman. They will never respect her in her position. I don't like that. I don't. She has a position. Respect her. Re- speak to her with respect. Okay. She too holds a seat. She too has a place here where, you know, amongst you guys. So the same way you guys require respect and expect respect and, 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 and utilize your authority for you to open your Caucasian oh, yeah. mouth. You know, thin lips to say to the oh, God damn, Rebecca. That she is a, a buckwheat. No, because you want to you want to say buckwheat because you're talking about my features. Now, if I come yeah. for you when I talk about your weight and how you're top heavy, and then you know you're wearing, you know you you, you have all and these braids like, in your hair. Your hair is untamed. You look messy. 
Um, <laughs> what I say? I said this the other day, James. I don't. I don't know if Rebecca. No, Rebecca, you're on here. I said the last thing you want to do is 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 get read by a black woman. My God, Rebecca, you just talked about the man's thin <laughs> lips. Good Jesus, you need Cause don't try it with the black. Like you're coming for her, and oh, I need you to understand. Man. Like people don't understand. White folks don't get it. We can always disrespect you back about how you look. And I'm not saying that mm. all white people look the same. Right. But um, what I'm saying is that like this type of disrespect happens yeah. so much in the workplace, in people, in places where people hold high positions. They're still mm. treated like, you know, somebody on the streets. But I'm like, a I'm whole a elected I'm in representative. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Po- official. My yeah. voice matters. We literally saw our own representative here in Georgia get dragged by her heels, literally get mm. dragged off because she wanted to look a man, uh, our governor in his eyes as he took away our rights. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and she didn't put her hands on anyone. She didn't do anything, but that's how they treat us. They talk to us any kind of way and they, they, they treat us any kind of way, no matter what position you have, no matter nothing. If you don't look like them, and they that's can why say they... anything to you. Yes, the, the representative was part canon, but um, they, that's Georgia, what they're fighting so hard against. They're fighting mm-hmm. to make sure that they can still say and do whatever they want to say and do without having any accountability, without being held uh, uh, liable for for their actions. They want they they would take they would rather. Actually, let me just go to this next story, because it, it really actually dovetails all of this because all of it is connected. All of these people that are pushing this this legislation against critical race, race theory on the school board level, on the state legislator level, on the federal level, they're all, generally speaking, a bunch of white conservatives, white conservative men, to be more precise. Um, mm-hmm. And I, 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 this is another one. This is out of Tennessee. Uh, Tuesday, a legislator in Tennessee took to the House floor in order to praise the three-fifth compromise which was an agreement the founding fathers made that could only that only counted black people as three fifths of a person when it came to the census. I want us to take a look at what he said uh, and then unpack it because it is part and parcel of what's going on across this country. They want they need they need to keep America the way it was. And that is where black people can't speak up against their racism. Take a listen. In. The three fifths compromise was a direct effort to ensure that Southern states never got the population necessary to continue the practice of slavery everywhere else in the country. What does that mean? Appropriation based on population. That's how we pick. Everybody in here knows we've got nine, I hope I'm right, nine state representatives. By limiting the number of population in the count, They specifically limited the number of representatives that would be available in the slaveholding states, and they did it for the purpose of ending slavery well before Abraham Lincoln, well before Civil War. Do we talk about that? I don't hear that anywhere in this conversation across the country. I don't know how we've gotten here. I don't know what we do about it. But talking about changing our history, changing is not the right word talking about incorporating another view of history while ignoring the very writings that we have access to is no way to go about it. So he almost told on himself, he was talking about changing history, right? Because he's asking everyone to listen to all of these great aspirational things that America said at its founding that all men are created equal, right? That's what he wants us to focus on. He wants to focus on the fact that Thomas Jefferson wrote against slavery, But not on the fact that he owned slaves and that he raped his slaves. Right. He doesn't want us to focus on the real history from the perspective of the people who were on the receiving end of America's racism. So and although he claimed that it decreased the power of southern slaveholders, the app the opposite is absolutely the case. Now, Lafferty, after the after he uh, he spoke in that video, after he stopped speaking, Republican members of the House stood up and applauded his remarks. In other words, they are looking to be able to rewrite histories themselves in a way that makes it seem like America wasn't as bad as it was. But y'all, I mean, the proof is in the pudding, but this is what we're dealing with. And like like the last case, the last story, I can't remember the sister's name, but this is every damn day. They want us to believe they want us to believe that there was nothing wrong in this country in the past and that there's nothing wrong in this country right now because they want to be able to get away with murder. That's what they want. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired, so tired. Boss. 
Because, yeah, because this this is pissing me off that this man is literally, excuse me, sitting in a place. And this is another Tucker Carlson moment to me and how they take their platforms and spew out this type of conversation and lead it. And really be so strong and gun ho about it. And, Loud and wrong. <laughs> and, and think that it is, yeah, and think that it is so, you know, something that is so compelling to go back in history and give these people a pat on the back. You know what I mean? So I just, for 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 nothing, you know, we can't, y'all looking in history Y'all reaching for things with short arms. There's nothing there. <laughs> there is nothing there for you guys to say that we were once good people. Mm. We are good people. We have been good people. Those kind of things. Like, no, just right now, you know, if you want to be a good person, start. Uh, well, start by not killing us for nothing. Facts. You know, well, you know, hearing the conversations that we have when we say abolish the police or, you know, uh, defund the police. Understand what we're saying when we say that. And when we say Black Lives Matter, do not feel like you're not included because you're not included because you guys are the ones that matter here in America. All we're saying is to include us and make sure that we matter, too. So, mm. you know, it's too much it, to it, ask. It, apparently, it's, it's too much to ask. Start making laws that protect us, not to take away rights from us. So don't sit here and tell us to go back in history about nothingness. That doesn't make sense. But people are going to listen to him. People are going to go by what this man is saying and say that it is true. Thomas Jefferson was against slavery, but yet he raped slaves and possibly has kids in this mm. world that are not able to benefit from his bloodline. You know what I mean? Like the, the this is what we're talking about here. So stop playing on black folks. Stop playing on brown folks. Stop playing on us. Stop. You guys but, have history of being terrible in this country. We have to call a thing a thing. We will not sugarcoat it to make you guys feel good anymore. None of that kumbaya stuff. None of the commercials of the black woman with the white man or vice versa with the mixed kid. We're not on that right now. We're talking about how abusive you guys have been to us, how, you're, how abusive your laws are to us, how they're meant to kill us, not to help us progress. Like, that's what we're talking about. And that's history that shows us that. History. That's, that is the history. Right. That, that's the history.